God, has it been that you know, almost 40 years? Wow, I am old. Jeez. I don't know what motivates the players of today. You know, the thing that I'm still old school. You know, I believe that you do your talking on your play on the field and let the others talk to you. You know, this this day and age of, you know, we got a first down, so, you know, I got to do this or, you know, I got to crawl because I got a sack. You know, that's fine. That's cute and all that, but you can't be that excited when you win and then when you lose, you go silent, you go dark. Because when we win, we in your face. We them boys. We up in there. We are partying like we just won the Super Bowl. But then we lose and we don't hear shit from you. You go crawling away and hiding. Or when shit goes downhill, we check out. And that's where the coach comes in. I don't know what they do. What Shanahan does with those 49ers, I have to give them credit because when those guys show up, whether it's on the road or at home, they're ready to take your head off. They are motivated. When they were getting their lunch handed to them by the Lions, they didn't go into a shell and have the body language like like they, they, they stole your lunch money, like mama just beat you with a switch. I know all you young kids don't know nothing about a switch, okay? I know you don't know nothing about a switch, but when your mama told you, you go out on that tree and you get a switch so she can whip your ass with it, you didn't come back with no weak ass switch because if she had to go out there and get that switch, boy, you you really going to get whipped. Yeah, I know y'all don't know nothing about that, but that's the way we act when shit hits the fan. And that's on the coaching. Not having the players that we need. Running game. Offensive line. Defensive line. Linebackers. That's on Jerry. And not showing up to play. That's on the players. There's plenty of plenty to go around. There's plenty of blame to go around. And the thing is, like Al Pacino just said on there, the inches we need are all around us. The things we need, because all of you people that keep saying, blow it up, blow it up, man, trade that, get rid of CD, get rid of Micah Parsons. Now you got even more that you have to get. I would rather say, let's get some cash. Let's go out there and get the players we need, the inches we need. Let's get the motivators. Let's find out. Hell, get the psychologists, psychiatrists in here. You know, I remember. I'm gonna tell. I'm, I'm, I'm running a little over time here, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be factual with you guys, okay? Because this is a true story. This is 100 percent true. Because when I Went to JMU. I, I tore up my knee, my ACL. I have no ACL on my left knee. People don't believe me, but I tore it in high school. The last scrimmage before the NFL, excuse me, before the high school season started, my senior year. In that game, one of the scouts from UVA, I was an offensive guard, was scouting me because they wanted me to go to the University of Virginia and make me a fullback because I was running a 4 six forty at 210 pounds, and I was really strong. But in that game, I tore my ACL, and after that, they were like, well, if you get accepted to University of Virginia, you can walk on and try out for the team. Okay. So, I ended up having surgery on my knee a week and a half later. Two and a half weeks after having my ACL cleaned up, what was left of it, I played football. I played the last six games. I missed four games. Four games. Believe it or not, having torn my ACL. 
and focused on track. Did indoor track, outdoor track, through shot put, through the discus, ran the 55 indoors, ran the 100, the 200, and the 400 from time to time. And when I went to JMU, when I went to JMU, I was running track. And I was trying to become a decathlete because, I, you know, I love sports. I love sports. Problem was that JMU, while trying to learn how to pole vault, I broke two pole vaulting poles. I was too heavy and too strong, and I kept muscling the pole, and they snapped. So the coach is like, nah, bro, we don't have it in the budget to keep breaking pole vaulting poles and stuff. So you, you can sprint, you can long jump, you can shot put, you can discus. And while I was running track, Chalice McNillan, the coach, got fired at JMU. And they hired Joe Persiski from Delaware State. And one of the coaches was Coach Charles Jones, who actually had tried out for the Cowboys, but he got his wrist broken and didn't make the team. He was our deep, he was the defensive line coach, but he would watch me run the track. He would watch me in the weight room and stuff. And he said, hey, I want you to come out for the football team. I was like, man, bro, I played offensive line in high school. I'm too small to play offensive line. He said, no, I still want you to play nose guard. I was like, okay, that makes sense. He said, no. He said, with your speed and your strength, he said, you can be a, a guy that can really rush the passer. Okay, you can stunt and move with this, that, and the other. So I walked on at JMU. I walked on. And what it ended up being was scout team. Scout team. And it sucked because what would happen – I remember one of the first practices I learned the hard way, playing nose guard. I'd get hit by the center. I'd get hit by the guard. I'd get hit by the other guard. I'd get hit by the guard in the center. And if that wasn't enough, they would all go past me, then the fullback would hit me. I'm just like a pinball. Just a pinball. The first team offense would come out. They'd practice. They'd go off the field. The second team offense would come out. They'd practice. Boom. Then the first team would come out. We ain't stopping getting water. You are a glorified bag. And I remember we had a guy named Adam Burkett who was about 300 pounds tackle. And I remember it to this day to a point because I remember – the guard went right past my ass here. The center crossed my face. The other guard went that way. I looked up for the fullback, and I didn't see the fullback. But then I saw Warren Marshall, nicknamed Shades, who was about six foot one running back that was big. Shades was cool. Shades was a beast. He got drafted, I want to say, by Denver, maybe. And I see him, and I'm thinking in my mind, I'm finally going to get to tackle the running back because there's nobody around. And as I stood up to meet him in the hole, that's when Adam Burkett came down and hit me in the ear hole. I remember the contact right there, and I don't remember anything until I woke up over there looking up at Coach Jones with his finger in my face and seeing the stars literally spinning around. And he says, never stand up in the hole. Okay? So that was what it was like when I walked on. Okay. I would always say, fuck this. I'm going to try and do something. Excuse my language. The, the, the offensive linemen had a thing. It's like, look, if you don't make me look bad, we won't kill you. And I would be like, screw you, man. You ain't getting any better by me taking it easy on you. And I remember a couple times hitting um, Green. I can't remember his first name. Our quarterback. And I remember the offensive line coach going off. What the hell is you letting this little 200 something some bitch get the quarterback? And the, he's, yelling, he's yelling at the offensive line. The offensive line get pissed off. You know, they're cheap shotting me. You know, they're double teaming, hitting my knees and everything else. We're fighting and practice and everything else. And I'm sitting here in my mind thinking, screw this. Why am I here as a fucking dummy? Why am I doing this? I was running track. You know, we had the girls with the short shorts and stuff, you know, and the bodies that were like bang, 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 you know, and I'm sitting here literally sweating my ass off. And I remember that practice to this day because it was like, I can't wait to get to the locker room and I'm going to throw my equipment at the equipment manager. I'm done with this shit. Forget this, man. 
And I remember sitting there because we had always come together at the middle of, at the end of practice. Coach Brzezicki, his father was a used car salesman. He was Italian and he had this gravelly kind of voice and stuff and things. And he's talking about how some of you guys are so lazy and taking it easy that in playing football, it's not easy. You have to give 100% and, and everything. Where, 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 did, where did it go? Where, where is everything? Uh oh. Um, are we still live? This is weird. Okay. Um, hopefully, I'm still live here to finish off this story. But Coach Brzezicki is sitting there talking about how people could take a lesson. How people should understand that you need to give it all. And he's like, there's a guy out here who's always constantly giving everything that he's got. And he worked, he said, what we're going to do is he's going to be on the traveling squad. He's going to end up being on special teams. He's going to play. He's going to be rewarded and blah, 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 blah. And in my mind, I'm sitting here like, man, I wish this mother humper would hurry up and finish talking. Okay. I'm sick and tired. I want to get in the locker room. I want to take off this, this crap. I want to turn off this stuff. I want to quit. I want to be out of here. I want to be done. I'm sick of this shit. And then he says, Mark Holmes. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, the fuck? What, what, what did I miss? And so that was me getting elevated to the traveling squad. And I started playing special teams. I got moved up to special teams. My job, though was I was the hot man on kickoff. This is a position that is completely different because it used to be you had what was known as the wedge. You'd have five guys, five big guys. When the ball's kicked, they would get together and they would stay tight together and run up the field. My job is I'm the closest guy into the, to the kicker. My job was to be the wedge buster. My job was to run full speed down the field when I see the wedge be a heat-seeking missile and run into it. Run into it and bust the wedge. And the reason I say this was because hearing that speech reminded me of Coach Przicki before the game. We were playing the very first game I played in the state of Virginia. The big game in the, the state was called the Oyster Bowl played at Old Dominion University. The very first game that I played in in college. I am the hot man on the kickoff team. And here it is, Coach Przicki. We're in the locker room for the game and everything else. We got 30,000 people that are out there. This is before JMU is JMU that they are now. It's uh, playing in bowl games. Coach Brzezicki is getting everybody fired up. And it's almost like, you know, a, a Jesse Jackson, I am somebody speech. And he's talking and he's and everything else. He's like, Mark Holmes, you go out there and you destroy somebody. I got so fucking pumped up. I was literally ready to run through a brick wall. And I get out there and I'm so pumped up. I'm just like, you know, I just, I just want to, I just want to, I want to destroy something. I am just like ready to go. And it was a coin toss. We won the coin toss. We received. Oh, shit. So, now I got to wait till the defense is done stopping them. And we run the ball back. Boom. Touchdown. I'm over here because I've lost my pump and I got some Gatorade. I'm sitting here drinking some Gatorade and I hear kickoff team. What? Oh, shit. <coughs> I've lost my pump. I've, lo I've literally lost my pump. And I'm grabbing my helmet and I'm running out on the field and I feel like I'm going to throw up. Honestly, this is, I honestly feel like I'm going to throw up. I probably looked how CD looked after he dropped those two passes. That's how bad it was. And I remember being out there. I remember seeing that football sitting right there. I remember hearing the band. The band was playing. 
Okay, it's, okay. It's pumping up. It's pumping up. And I'm sitting here. I'm looking down the field. It looks like it's a long ways away. But I'm looking down the field. I'm looking at the kicker. Looking down the field. Looking at the kicker. The kicker runs up. Boom. Kicks the football. I start running. I'm running. I'm running. I see the guys. I see the ball get the guy's hands. I see the guys together. I see them running. And I'm just running and running and running at full speed and everything else. And I close my eyes and I hit the wedge. I hit the wedge, everything goes dark. And then I feel people grabbing my shoulder pads and patting me on the head and everything else. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? And as I open up my eyes, I have the kick returner underneath of me. I literally hit the wedge, busted in between two guys, and basically was shot out like a cannon and caught the running back right there on the 12 yard line and that was the first tackle that i made the point that i'm making about this story and i'm sorry it's taken quite a while to get there is the job of the coach is to get you excited to make you alleviate your fears to make you literally feel like you can run through a brick wall, that this is your home, that you own this game and that team. You have the confidence to win. And that's what I don't see with this Dallas Cowboys team. We're front runners, man. You know, we're the life of the party. Hey, (laughs) you know, but I think about, My wife and the relationship that I have with her, I am so blessed because here's when you know that you really, really have your partner in life. Not when everything's great, not when you got all kinds of money and everything and the parties and you're good looking and healthy and young. When you know that you truly have your partner in crime in life and everything else is when the shit hits the fan that they don't run. They don't hide. And I feel like that's half the problem with the Cowboys. We're great when things are going, you know, that's why we blow people, you know, when we're, when we're on, we blow people out the water. We have all kinds of confidence in the world. But when things go bad, if something, a player two goes wrong, we just shut down. CeeDee Lamb. Two bad catches. Guy pushes you in the back. You just literally. What was me, man? Today's not our day. In San Francisco, I hate you guys. But I don't see that from you guys. I don't see you guys quit. I don't see you guys backing down. I don't know who's going to be the one to make these guys motivated. We should have beat Green Bay. I don't know if we had enough talent to beat San Francisco, but we damn sure should have beat Green Bay. And that is on Jerry, Mike, the players. That's on everybody. That is a total team loss. And see, that's where Jimmy Johnson, you saw the fire of Jimmy Johnson at halftime in that game. That's a guy that has passion, drive, and power to motivate people. So I've let you into a little window of Mark Holmes. I was freaking like Rudy. Scout team, that's how I worked my way up. But it goes to show you, it doesn't matter where you come from. If you put in the work and you never give up, you can succeed.